episode of the Low Budget Review Show. I'm your host, Eric Smith, and today I'm talking about The Night Parade by Ronald Malfi. This is from Kensington Books, and it is available now. should be available in your local bookstore if they don't have it. I'm sure they can order you a copy or just pick it up on Amazon or wherever you like to get your books, but it's The Night Parade by Ronald Malfi. Um, so this is about uh, David Arlen. He's our main character, but uh, it's also about a plague, Wanderer's Folly. And uh, first, right, it says right on the back of the book, the birds disappear, and then uh, uh, that causes the insect population to explode. And then, as it says on the back cover, the madness begins. Uh, what you have with Wanderer's Folly is um, it causes hallucinations, um, and that leads to people doing very bad things, um, mostly to themselves. And some people just die from Wanderer's Folly. It just, it just kills them. Um, but some people end up dead because of other things that Wanderer's Folly has done to them. Does that make sense? Um, so that's sort of the premise, but David Arlen, he's our character, we're following him. He's in every scene in the book, and the book starts with David on the run. He's got his eight-year-old daughter Ellie with him in the back seat of the car, and he's running from something. We don't know what's going on. Uh, and so we follow he, uh, David and Ellie as they travel across the country, uh, and this is interspersed with flashbacks. It goes back, uh, 21 months is the farthest back it goes. And the flashbacks slowly get closer and closer to the present until they sort of collide. Um, <clears throat> so everything is going to be filled in as we read along. Uh, but the the main, well, I can't even say because it seems half and half. I was going to say the main story is is David and Ellie, um, which I suppose so. But it, it's, there's a lot of the flashbacks filling in. Um, so it's kind of split evenly it seems it feels like it to me anyway anyway um so this is not quite an end of the world story this is the middle of the end of the world maybe uh i've seen some comparisons uh to the stand um and of course swan song comes to mind or at least I've heard those mentioned in the same breath with this book. But this is, uh, both of those, I think, so The Stand and Swan Song are very epic. They're, they're huge stories. And this is a much smaller story. The, um, the, the apocalypse, for lack of a better term, is huge in scope, but we're very focused on David and Ellie, uh, which I really like. And... Uh, they're great characters. Of course, Ronald Melfi, his writing is always fantastic, and he writes amazing characters. Um, <clears throat> there are quite a few more characters than just David and Ellie. They're just our, they're our main characters. Uh, and everybody really is, has a depth to them. Um, David in particular, uh, you know, his, his sole purpose at this point of the story is protecting his daughter and he does things that may seem wrong or inappropriate maybe uh, not in like that bad touch way but uh, but it's all to protect his daughter uh, there's even a point where he does something that I think is like a completely asshole thing to do um, I understand why he does it but it's still just a dick move um, and I think it's the strength of Ronald Melfi's writing and the strength of his characters that makes this thing stand out to me um, because David Arlen is, is a full character um, he's he's not perfect he's he's not he isn't some post-apocalyptic hero he's just a guy trying to protect his daughter he, he makes plenty of mistakes uh, he does things you know I agree with some of the things he does I disagree with some of the things he does and then again there's that one moment 
where I'm just like, what a dick. Man, that's the shittiest thing that you just did. Um, and I, I think if the characters weren't so well written, I wouldn't care that much. Um, but they are very good characters. Um, Dave and Nellie both. Uh, David's wife. Uh, some of David's co-workers and neighbors and people he meets along the way on his trip. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, another thing about this sort of mid-apocalypse is... It, and it's it's very off-putting to me. Uh, I think we're all used to that, the apocalyptic story where basically the world as we know it has ended. Whether you're talking about The Walking Dead or, I mean, zombie flicks and stories really do it. But any other type of end of the world story, you know, it's there are maybe tiny pockets where people are trying to... Uh, reestablish civilization and of course your heroes are trying to survive and trying to reestablish their lives in the night parade it's because it's the middle of the end uh as david travels he, there are towns that are completely empty um and you're never quite sure if uh they were evacuated or if everybody just died there um so you do have these desolate places but at the same time, just a few miles down the road, maybe, uh, you have a town where everything's relatively normal. Shops are open. People are going about their business. Uh, David and Ellie never have to scrounge for food. They're always stopping at restaurants. and getting, They stop for pizza. They stop for burgers. They stop for shakes. Um, and yet, they drive a few more miles down the road, and there's nobody. Just no cars on the road no sign of life anywhere it's it's very off-putting um because it's not it's not what you expect i think from this type of story because it's not the traditional end of the world story it's the middle of the end of the world uh and it's again it's very personal because we're following david and we're not seeing and anything else i mean anything we see is from david's perspective <clears throat> so we're not seeing how it's affecting. Uh, he starts out near the East Coast, and he's moving west, but we never see what's going on in the West Coast or in other countries. Uh, there are uh, bits of news that David gets, so we get it, about what's going on everywhere. But we don't go to these places as the reader and see what's happening. We're just following David. Um, and it's this book was just amazing. <laughs> Easily, easily a contender for my favorite book of the year. There's only one other book, I think, right now that that comes close to this. Just uh, Ronald Melfi uh, just gets better and better. Last year he had uh, Little Girls, which was absolutely fantastic. One of my favorite books of last year. Now he's got The Night Parade, which is absolutely one of my favorite books of this year. And I think... Uh, my favorite of what he's written, just absolutely fantastic. It's heart wrenching. Um, there are I'm not a I'm not ashamed to admit I got emotional at certain points. Um, you know I don't want to give away too much of the plot. Uh, there there is a uh, the, you know the government is hard at work trying to find a cure, um, which. I will say, because you've learned this relatively early on, so I'm not spoiling anything, that's uh, the government thinks, or the CDC at least, yeah, the government, uh, they think that Ellie might be able to help them find a cure. That's why they are after Ellie. But something happened uh, that keeps David from wanting to turn her over to the CDC. Um, we learned that early on. No spoilers there, really. So... <clears throat> So that's why they're on the run. Uh, but they're, you know, while this is going on, the government's looking for a cure. There's this group of people, a cult essentially, I suppose, called uh, Worlders. Is it just Worlders? I don't know. You'll have to read the book because I can't remember exactly what it is. But they believe essentially that Wanderer's Folly is the Earth's way of cleansing itself. They don't want a cure found. They think if you live, you live. If you die, you die. It's just the Earth doing earth stuff um, to clean things up. So you've got these weirdos running around. And 
uh, David, uh, he runs into some good people. He runs into some crazy people. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And, you know, he's trying to stay under the radar. So it's really, it, it's a compelling story. It's a very personal story. Um, it's just, it's so well written. It's so intense. Some of the stuff that, I mean, you'll, if you're like me, you'll be on the edge of your seat at points. Um, uh, I like the uh, going back and forth between the past and the present, the, the past slowly catching up with the present, uh, because, of course, you get hints uh, as David's driving. A lot of times, you know, Ellie's asleep or whatever, so we're in David's head, essentially. Um, so we're getting hints of things, uh, and then we'll get the flashback that will sort of fill that in and tell us, what goes on and there's lots of big revelations towards the end of the book um, excuse me so really I'm not sure what else to say I don't want to give too much away because you really really need to read this um, <clears throat> excuse me so my rating for the night parade by Ronald Malfi I actually went a little deep with this one I like to think uh, I give it six out of five stuffed pink elephant toys now there's two reasons i went with that uh ellie has a stuffed elephant toy and wanderer's folly causes hallucinations and i don't know if it's a, a thing so much anymore but it used to be a kind of a cliche that if you were hallucinating you would see pink elephants so six out of five that's how good this book is six out of five Stuffed Pink Elephant Toys, For the Night Parade by Ronald Malfi. Pick this up, read it. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's it's just uh, the best that Malfi has done so far, in my opinion. I haven't read everything he's written. Not all of it, but a decent amount. And, uh, man, if he... <laughs> like I said, he just keeps getting better and better, so I don't know where he's going to go after this one. Um, no pressure. No pressure, Ronald. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's the night parade. Ronald Malfi from Kensington Books. Pick it up. Um, so, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Uh, comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. So if you want to know a little bit more about the story, um, just ask me in the comments. I'd be happy to talk about it. Um, <clears throat> so, comments down there. Uh, I will have one or two links for the book in the description below. I always have Amazon. Uh, maybe I'll throw in a Barnes & Nobles or something. Barnes & Noble. It's not plural at the end there. Uh, so, links for the book in the description below. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I think that's everything. So, this has been the Low Budget Review Show. I have been Eric Smith. And until next time, read more books.